so much for inviting me to be here. It's so exciting to be in front of uh, such a wonderfully impressive room of young girls who want to create your own businesses and develop your own apps. Um, I can tell you from firsthand experience, I just walked over from our developer's office uh, in South of Market, and it's a man cave because six developers, all male, and when I told them I'm gonna be talking to a classroom full of girls who want to be apps developers, they're like, Hurrah! They're like, we need more women in our industry. Um, their firm has tried to hire women, and you know, really, there's just not enough females like you who are talented that are out there and are available for hire. So if you guys keep on the path that you're on, there is a great job waiting for you guys. So I will start my presentation. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the business model in the nonprofit sector. Um, it's kind of funny to talk about business and nonprofit sector in the same word, word, but it's really about the same thing. In the nonprofit sector, there is also a market, a market where people don't necessarily pay for the product, but there's alternative sources of revenue. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this because I think some of the products that you might create might be for the nonprofit sector. Okay. Um, I'm going to start off uh, with a story about data validation. Um, and so, great nonprofits came about as a result of Hurricane Katrina. And if you remember those days, uh, those first days after the hurricane in August, um, we saw pictures of this all across our media. And what did everyone want to do? Everyone wanted to donate or volunteer. And the only place that we really knew about was the American Red Cross. Um, at the same time that American Red Cross was sort of fanning the internet with their advertisements looking for donors and volunteers, I was on the Craigslist New Orleans board. Um, it's a discussion board. And what was frightening to me were how many people writing in on that discussion board talking about how Red Cross was not there, the Red Cross was not giving out water, the Red Cross was demanding identification before providing any services, that the Red Cross was not answering any of the phone calls. So the discrepancy between what, what organizations, in this case the Red Cross, the people heard about and wanted to you know, give money to, versus the ones that were actually on the ground and making a difference, really struck me as a market opportunity. This was the market that I wanted to serve um, through a nonprofit. So my personal story really only, you know, uh, only makes sense looking backwards. Uh, before this, I was the publisher of a magazine at Stanford. Before that, I started this internet startup. Before that, I went to law school. And I think, you know, the lesson that, the only lesson really I have to impart to you guys today, if there is any, um, is that, you know, to some extent, use your intuition and use your, uh, your instinct to really follow what you do. And if you really enjoy what you do every step along the way, there's really no failure. You're constantly learning, you're constantly improving. So um, these are the topics that the, uh, the program uh, uh, organizers told me to go through, and I'm going to try to cover all that in 15 minutes, so ask me questions. Um, so what's new in philanthropy? What is the market that we're trying to solve? There is corporate employee giving and volunteering. There is cause marketing. There's online tools for giving, such as all the you know, causes and crowd rise and all those fundraisers, and there's online tools for volunteering. What we're trying to serve is a very distinct part of that market. So the current market is you have donors, people who want to give money, you've got nonprofits like the Red Cross in the middle, and then you've got beneficiaries, people such as the people in Hurricane Katrina. And if you look, the arrow only points one way. This is the model that we want to get to. This is the this is the market opportunity we see, that there are social investors, in other words, donors, there are nonprofits, and there are beneficiaries. But this is a circular loop, that the information and feedback from beneficiaries, like those people who were living in New Orleans, helps inform the donor to make better choices. The feedback helps the nonprofits improve their services. For instance, the Red Cross, the Red Cross their headquarters, could have known that there were all these problems on the ground and addressed them much earlier. It can help the beneficiaries feel like they're having an impact and a voice. Um, you know, so much of international aid, you know, $10 billion of international aid um, goes to disaster relief. And yet we know very little about what are the exact needs of people who live in a refugee camp in Haiti. Do they really need sweatshirts? Do they really need medical supplies? What are the foods that they would prefer to eat? We don't know because we currently do not ask them. And so these are the various volunteering and giving platforms out there. What we have created is something called Great Nonprofits. It's a website, kind of like a Yelp, where people give feedback about nonprofits that they've had experiences with. So this is a local example 
of Goodwill. Uh, this guy says, when I came to Goodwill, Will, I was on parole, home, homeless, and hardly involved with my two children. Now I went through the Goodwill training program, and my finances are, or, or, are in order. I'm off parole, and I can be a good father to my two children. So that's a story of a person who had a great experience with a nonprofit, and that's the kind of nonprofit that donors should support. What we try to do in our theory of change is to create emotions and uh, allow people to care about why the nonprofit is doing the work. So like Bono, um, who was transformed by his uh, visit to Africa, where he said, I saw it, I felt it, and I heard it. Before that, he was not involved in philanthropy at all. And so this is actually something to think about when you are pitching to investors. Because investors, although, yes, they want to make money, yes, they want to see you succeed, they're also people. And if you can tell them a story that will move them, a story that illustrates the impact of what you are creating and create that personal connection, that is something that can be extremely powerful. So currently, we have more than 90 reviews of nonprofits on our site. Our mission is to help inform and inspire donors volunteers enable great nonprofits to raise uh, their profile and promote greater nonprofit excellence. Our content is growing 40% per year. Um, and our business model is an interesting one. It's a combination of donations from foundations, from individuals, and we also sell our content. We license our content to partners such as GuideStar, Charity Navigator, other web portals, and we also collect program fees from foundations. So even though we're a nonprofit, we sell some of the data that we collect. And we sell some of the technology that we provide. Um, so data validation. Let's see what we have learned from the data we've collected so far. Who are the people who write these reviews? We have learned that the majority of people who write reviews are clients. So what we did was we went through 40,000 reviews, and then we looked at who was writing these. And then this is the pie chart that came out. The second largest uh, group of folks are uh, clients who have been served by the nonprofit. Um, how can most nonprofits improve? Uh, this is a breakdown of um, the using word frequency analysis of the words people use to describe word, ways in which nonprofits can improve. And as you can see, um, the majority of the words relate to something about funding, that the nonprofits requires more funding. So funding, money, support, funds, financial resources, um, those were at the very top. What's interesting about this is that most people think, um, most people outside of the industry think that, oh, nonprofits are mismanaged, you know, they're not really run professionally. But if you look at the reviews, that's not what they say. The reviews are actually saying these nonprofits could do better if they had more funding. Not that they're mismanaged, not that they're, you know, they're staffed with uh, people who are not qualified. Some of the other types of data that we use just for ourselves to understand our own um, uh, uh, our success, we look at uh, Google Analytics. Um, so we look at who comes to our site to write a review and where do they come from. And we recently did a, a research looking at Facebook versus Twitter. Twitter by far sends us far more traffic um, if you look at traffic wise, people coming to our site. But those people tend to be very inactive. They don't do anything on our website. Whereas people coming from Facebook, although there's fewer people who come from Facebook, more, many more of them are likely to write a review. Um, we also use a service called usertesting.com. It's a website where you can tell people to do a series of tasks on your website and they will record it and you can watch people using your website. It's a really great tool for user testing. And I would suggest uh, for folks to try it out on their, yourself. It's kind of like having your friends sit next to you and you tell them how to navigate through your app and then you watch them struggle as they try to do it. And then it helps you learn how to design your interface better. Um, some of the other kinds of data we use, um, we do annual surveys of nonprofits as well as individuals. Um, we also collect a lot of anecdotes. Um, you know, data does not necessarily have to be of a scientific level and have to be all about numbers. Data can very much be anecdotal if you have enough context around that data. Um, how do we pivot? So we are a data-driven social enterprise. And our financial revenues are largely dependent on foundations. And for foundations, what's really important is that we stay true to our mission. And so there are ways that we cannot pivot. For instance, we cannot be sold to a for-profit company. We cannot uh, take advertising revenue um, to a large extent. We cannot sell our lists of our users. Those are ways in which we cannot pivot because of our financial model being supported by a foundation. Um, so what do we do? Well, what we listen to feedback about what's out there that is consistent with our mission, and then we pivot 
around that trajectory. So for instance, we listen to customer service um, from nonprofits who can tell us, hey, you know, this picture upload, you know, it's okay, but I really need to upload my entire album of photos, not just one photo at a time. So we're working on that right now. Um, we are extremely careful about um, who we promote and their effect on our brand. And so we have had many opportunities to promote you know, other for-profit companies to work with us, and we have decided not to um, because it's not in line with our mission. And so you know, for a nonprofit social enterprise, there's a dual bottom line. You've got your social bottom line and you've got your financial bottom line. And you know, your data that you're trying to validate your business model has to go to both. You have to look at your financial sustainability and see which funders will support me on in this direction. And then you also have to look at your user base and say, what kind of products and services do my users want? In our case, most of our users are nonprofits. And so we have to see what is it that they want from us. I think I went over that. And I think that's the end.